All right, so Megabot just came in. I think it's a... Well, I mean, it's definitely the first Megabot replicator that I've actually fixed. Um, interesting here, so it's a couple years old. Uh, the guy said it was about $3,000. I mean, you can definitely see that it has some high-end components in it, and I'll, and I'll go through that. But the issue is it's intermittent, losing connectivity to the carriage. And at first, I didn't know, because there was a big crease in this ribbon cable, so all the communication between the board and the actual hot end is uh, done through this ribbon cable. So at first I thought it was this crease, or he said something fell onto it. But these things are really fragile, those ribbon cables. And they're hard to find, too, because they're very proprietary to the company. And it looks like it'd be a headache to replace this thing. Um, but nice printer. I mean, nice thick belts, Core XY. They use linear, they use linear rails. Um, the only thing I, I don't know is if you've been 3D printing for a long time, you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, see that blue tape? Well, that's what we did before there was heated beds. So this thing doesn't have a heated bed, as far as I can tell. What's weird, though, is it has glass, though. So that's throwing me off. So I don't know. That's weird that it would have glass and not have a heated bed. Because back in the day, it would just be a piece of aluminum or metal there. So, um, obviously, this looks like very proprietary firmware. I don't really know. I mean, obviously, the screen is different than your typical Marlin screen. So, what I'm trying to figure out is what firmware this thing is running. If it's running a custom, like, proprietary MakerBot firmware, or is it based on Marlin? But one thing I did notice about this thing is if I miss well it, at first this thing was intermittent right but then I started messing with this wire in here jiggling it here and it seemed to get a lot more reliable um so I'm going to take this front cover off and see if I can check the connector where the ribbon cable comes into the PCB up there yeah look at this pull off cartridge cell system here that is really unique I mean it's definitely a different printer than your typical like Crowley style like a uh, frame style printer um, it definitely wasn't cheap too so here's a look at the back of it all right I guess we gotta figure out what's wrong with it it's gonna be funny I haven't printed it on a 3d printer without a heated bed in probably five years um, all right all right so I'm doing a test print here so yeah, obviously it's some really old drivers. You can hear how noisy it is. Definitely aren't trinamics. Moving into position. So all I really did was wiggle the wire. I was going to try to open it up, but I was like, you will do a test print first just to see if it's got loose in there, you know? I mean, typically with these ribbon cables, it's either the ribbon cable or the connectors. It's weird, so I'm not familiar with this firmware. Like, I don't know if it's worth putting the money to upgrade or not. Just because you don't have the heated bed. I mean, the, obviously the motherboard's very old with the drivers. I don't even know what this thing is doing. Dino takes a long time to boot up. So I definitely don't think it's a Marlin-based firmware. I mean, all sorts... You know, another thing too with these, these screens is a lot of times the screens, the, the back end will run Marlin, but these actually act as like a mini computer, just sending G-code via UART directly to Marlin. At least that's how they first came out. They didn't really interface with Marlin. But this could be like its own, like, I mean, for a while they had like bo uh, boards called Lurge boards. Um, you know, the first 32-bit boards. But I'm probably guessing that's probably an 8-bit board. I don't know if this thing is doing stepping down or what it's doing. I don't know if there's a See that light right there? Is it like some kind of laser proximity sensor? Definitely it's not a fast printer. Position found. Final heating. You know, if this was actually my printer, I'd probably... I mean, the construction with the linear rails is awesome and the thick belts. Not a fan of the ribbon cable, obviously. Because I have so many issues with those things. Um, I mean, I'd upgrade probably to a heated bed. 
um, and uh, change out the bolt board. Something new like Marlin base or probably maybe Clipper. Get like an SKR Pico. Like I have in that box with their SKR Pico and maybe get like a Raspberry Pi and put Clipper on it. You know, maybe put the Clipper screen or put like either like one of those Sonic pads or, you know, put like a Raspberry Pi up front here, you know. Or even just replace this with like a 3.5 inch touch screen with a, I don't know, other things you could do with it. Go Marlin based, go Clipper based. Um, yeah, if you can find a cheap Raspberry Pi. What is the story with that, that thing right there? Look at that. God, I wish I knew more about this printer. I wonder if that little string is actually creating issues with the leveling. <laughs> it's kind of cool I get to see all these different printers though. Alright. Wow, the noise those drivers are. Ah, uh, filament jam. See how long it too. It took so long for this print to start. Man. Filament jam. Jeez, not the certain little process over again. Done bolt. Pause. Let's try that again. Oh, that's broken. Filament. Alright, me out the duh. It's not a touch screen. No. Exit. Cancel print. All right. Well, figuring it out. It kind of sucks. I'm forced to kind of do their do their game, do their system. All right, that's some film that. That's your little spring cut there. Hmm. Okay. Back to me. Okay. Let's do our print again. Like that goes. Internal memory. Samples, then bolts. Try that. Print. Yeah, it's definitely not a fast printer. Trying to get you guys some footage of this thing. <laughs> I mean, it is cool. I mean, you get to put all these cool 3D printers, but. You know, I would really love to know what that little light does. If it's like some kind of optical sensor, some kind of like maybe. Highly doubt it's like sonar type, sonar base, but that is pretty cool. I mean, this is like older technology from like three or four years ago, so never seen that before. Wow. Um, what the hell? Can I do like an offset? So it's doing like a raft or something? It needs a... Yeah. Um, picture. Can I change the Z offset on this thing? Well, I mean, this thing probably has a huge nozzle on it. Because look how thick that bead is. Yeah, I'm guessing that's a raft. Yeah, this is a built-in funnel from it. Yeah. <laughs> All that noise brings back memories, man. That's what it sounded like when I first started out. Blue, blue masking tape and this noise. Just drive my wife crazy. Well, you guys are wondering where all the noise is from. This is before we had micro-stepping. So, With micro stepping, you're actually you can get more increments, more steps. I don't know if you can see my hand, you can get more steps. To have large steps, like one, two, three, it's a lot more smooth. So you're not going to get very high resolution out of this printer. So you're, you'll never get really. I mean, for modern printing, you're not going to. It's not going to be suitable really good for modern printing. I mean, it will work, but you know, you don't expect high quality prints with these old drivers like this. Yeah, it's funny. The, I mean, you never hear the sound come out of it, but it reminds me of like an 80s based like a uh, Space Invaders or something. Galaga. Just the noise. Alright, so that's the end of the MakerBot. Or, yeah, MakerBot. 
pretty cool. I mean, it will work. I mean, like I said, it's not good for prime time modern stuff, but um, right, interesting to see this printer how it works and how it pops off the front like that too. So, all right, guys, cool.